Uh, thank you. Moving swiftly on. Topical questions on education and skills. Number one, Gail Ross, please. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how it can support schools to ensure that their staff and teachers are trauma-informed. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. Presiding officer, relationship-based approaches in schools are essential to preventing and mitigating the impact of childhood adversity. Education Scotland has developed guidance for schools on nurturing approaches and their links with adverse childhood experiences and trauma-informed practice. Education Scotland is also developing additional career-long professional learning resources on trauma-informed practices in collaboration with stakeholders. This is in addition to the development of curricular resources to develop children and young people's resilience, knowledge and understanding of attachment and trauma-informed supports. Gail Ross. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Edinburgh University recently published research that shows that two-thirds of children in Scotland have suffered some sort of trauma. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that schools play a pivotal role in addressing this and will he reiterate his commitment to cross-portfolio working to address this public health emergency? Thank you. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I do agree with the point that um, Gail Ross has raised and reiterate the importance across different aspects of government that we work together to uh, address uh, these issues. Uh, as Gail Ross will know from my attendance at the cross-party group, that I convened a cross-portfolio uh, discussion in Bella Houston Academy last spring, um, we, which drew together public servants and ministers in a variety of different disciplines uh, to focus on uh, this uh, very important question of cross-portfolio working. Um, we are progressing with the recommendations from that discussion, and I will, of course, keep uh, Parliament informed on some of the important work that's come from that, such as the Education Scotland guidance on nurture adverse childhood experiences and trauma-informed practice, which is available for schools today. Question two, Elaine Smith. Thank you, presiding officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its position is on the trend in the number of college students since 2007. Minister Richard Lockett. We have exceeded our target of 116,269 full-time equivalent college places and exceeded that target every year since 2011. And as recent Scottish Funding Council statistics show, in 2017-18, an estimated 95.5% of learning hours were delivered on courses that led to a recognised qualification, and that's a 6.8% point increase since 2006-2007. Elaine Smith. Thank you, President Officer, and I thank the Minister for his response. However, I wonder if he's aware that there are actually over 120,000 fewer students, many of them disabled, in Scotland's colleges since 2007, and that the sector has faced underinvestment to the tune of £1 billion over the same period. In addition, yesterday, college lecturers went on strike to protest the fact their pay has failed to keep pace with the cost of living. So, with a lack of investment, loss of student places, as well as the demotivated uh, lecturers, all impacting on student education and experience, will the Cabinet Secretary admit that colleges have suffered under the SNP Government and will he urge the employers to offer a fair settlement when they meet with EIS Fela? Before you rise, short supplementaries, please. I know it's an important topic, but shorter supplementaries. Thank you, Mr Minister. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the current disputes between lecturers uh, and their employers, that is, of course, a matter for these two parties to resolve. And I will continue to urge them to do that because of the interest of students and the strike that took place this week uh, was regrettable, given the, my understanding was that the most recent talks just a few days ago were actually quite positive. So I hope they continue in that spirit. In terms of how our colleges are faring under the SNP government, as I've just explained in my opening answer, they are exceeding their targets. And I think that's good news for the learners. And I think it's good news for the Scottish economy uh, as well. And that's why there's an increased focus on full-time courses that deliver a positive destination and recognise qualifications for those undertaking them, because that is the best solution for the future of our economy. And the colleges are quite right to focus on that, because that's in the interest of the country. So I think under the SNP, the colleges are delivering for Scotland. Oliver Mundell. Thank you, presiding officer. To ask the minister what steps have been taken to increase the number of women studying STEM-related courses at college in light of the recent trends identified in the RSEs Tapping All Our Talents report. Minister. Uh, the Ross Society of Edinburgh's report, Tapping All Our Talents, is an excellent report. And I know there's a members debate that we spoke in just a few days ago on that subject. Uh, and there's a number of recommendations in that report that the Scottish Government are looking at very closely. And of course, our first annual report into the Scottish Government's strategy for STEM, which includes a number of measures to uh, address gender-related issues, 
It will actually be published uh, this week uh, as well, and of course uh, that will be publicised over the next uh, 48 hours or so. So there's a number of steps that the Scottish Government are taking. As the member knows, there's some positive indicators, where there's some good news of the number of women and girls participate, participating in STEM increasing, but there are still a number of challenges in other areas as well. Question three, Mary Fee. To ask the Scottish Government what the impact will be of the college capital spending plans in the draft budget. Minister. The 2019-20 draft budget for college capital will continue to provide funding for the maintenance of the college sector estate and the completion of the new Forth Valley College campus in Falkirk. The Scottish Funding Council will allocate this year's funding for college maintenance with a view to meeting priority needs and will publish indicative allocations for institutions by the end of February. Mary Fee. Can I thank the Minister for that answer? But the Minister will know that the Scottish Funding Council have estimated that up to £360 million of investment is required to make college campuses wind and water tight over the next five years. Does the Minister not accept that this draft budget delivers nowhere near the investment that the Government's own report says is needed? Minister. Well, the Scottish Government, uh, through the Scottish Funding Council, is working closely with our, our colleges and indeed our universities in terms of capital expenditure. But the member's quite right. Of course, there's huge pressure on our capital budgets right across the Scottish Government. This is not just an issue for further and higher education. And what we would like, of course, is more uh, UK funding to come to Scotland to allow us to allocate higher levels of the necessary uh, investment in our infrastructure for our colleges uh, as well. However, the, there is a budget in, in the draft budget, as you know, £47.6 million. Uh, that will be used for priority needs for the sector. Uh, and that's the negotiations we've been having with the sector. So, yes, we'd all love to have more money in those budgets. And, of course, the Labour Party had the real opportunity to negotiate with the Scottish Government over the budget, uh, and they didn't take up that opportunity. Question four, Kenneth Gibson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what impact the Pupil Equity Fund has had on attainment in North Ayrshire. Cabinet Secretary. Presiding Officer, since 2015-16, North Ayrshire has been allocated almost £25.5 million of funding from the Sc Attainment Scotland Fund. This includes more than £16 million through the Challenge Authority programme and approximately £4.4 million pupil equity funding in each of the, the last two years. In an inspection report published last year, Her Majesty's inspectors reported that North Ayrshire is making very good progress with improving learning, raising attainment and narrowing the poverty-related attainment gap. They identified that strong leadership, effective partnership working and strong approaches to staff development are helping drive improved outcomes for children and young people. Kenneth Gibbs. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that reply. I does agree that head teachers are best placed to know the strengths and weaknesses of education provision in their schools and therefore what additional measures will be introduced to strengthen their autonomy further? Cabinet Secretary. Um, I, 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 I do hold that view, and that view lies at the heart of the empowerment agenda that has been taken forward by the, uh, the joint work between the government and local authorities. Good progress has been made on establishing the approach to delivering the Head Teachers Charter and to empowering individual professionals. One of the key features of the North Ayrshire inspection is the importance that's attached to professional learning by the local authority. I welcome that. The Professional Learning Academy in um, North Ayrshire contributes significantly to enhancing the education and learning opportunities for staff. And that is, of course, the best means by which we can enhance learning and teaching for young people within our education system. Question five, Edward Mount. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what actions it has taken in the last year regarding the provision of training for teachers and staff to support pupils with mental health issues. Cabinet Secretary. Presiding Officer, we've made clear the commitment of this government to promote and support children's mental health and well-being through wide-ranging commitments in our programme for government. We are continuing to support local authorities to access mental health first aid training for key staff, which will complement the spectrum of mental health strategies that are already in place within schools. Mental health is covered in the General Teaching Council for Scotland's Standard for Full Registration, and coverage will be further enhanced in a new version of the standards due to be published next year. Edward Mountain. Uh, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. I welcome the positive steps taken by the Scottish Government to deliver mental health first aid training to teachers. However, it's unclear in the programme for government if training will be provi provided to all school staff, including teaching assistants and additional support needs staff. Could the Cabinet Secretary clarify that, please? Cabinet Secretary. 
Uh, what the, the, the government has set out in our programme for government is a range of different measures to ensure that we strengthen the capacity within individual schools to meet the mental health and wellbeing needs of young people. One of the key elements of that will be about the training of individual members of staff, but another part of it will be about the commitment to invest in school counselling services across Scotland, which is a very important element of the package of support. That will put in place the support necessary within individual schools to ensure that uh, practitioners are able to support young people to, uh, within, in a preventative way and, as, uh, and on the basis of early intervention within the school system. Now, there has been extensive rollout of uh, training for staff within secondary school communities uh, to increase their, their confidence in approaching pupils who they think are struggling with mental health issues. Um, 18 local authorities have now received that training uh, and we uh, will continue to work with local authorities to roll out those steps in due course. Gillian Martin. Thank you, President Officer. I appreciate the Cabinet Secretary has touched on this in that last answer. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline how the increased investment and recruitment of school counsellors will assist teachers in managing mental health issues? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, obviously, if we, by the investment that we make in mental health counselling, we will be increasing the capacity within schools to be able to uh, proactively support young people. And I think all of the analysis that's been undertaken that lies at the heart of the mental health strategy that has been put forward by, um, by ministers um, is the importance of early intervention to support young people at the earliest possible moment where they may be wrestling with mental health and wellbeing challenges. So that investment in capacity within schools is a key intervention to try to ensure that schools are able to deal with circumstances which they may um, ordinarily and currently find um, uh, they, they, they do not feel confident to handle, but as a consequence of the investment, uh, we hope that capacity will be increased uh, to ensure that is the case. Question six, Patrick Hardy. Thank you. Can I ask the government what its response is to the document toward a cooperative university by Queen Margaret University members of the University and College Union Scotland? Minister. Uh, the Scottish Government welcomes all contributions in the future of higher education sector in Scotland and we have noted the content and the views expressed in this particular document which I am thankful to Patrick Harvey for bringing to my attention. Patrick Harvey. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful. Clearly the, the, the institution and the union are currently in dispute and the institution don't agree with all of the contents uh, of this document but they do say we agree with many values expressed in it. Uh, does, the, does the government see merit in the general argument that's being put forward about a cooperative model for our educational institutions? And, and will the, the minister commit to ensure that the Scottish government takes a, a, a constructive approach to identifying any, uh, any barriers that may exist to this model being pursued and what the government might be able to do to remove those minister. barriers? Well, I read uh, towards a cooperative university in preparation for this question. That's why I'm thankful to Patrick Harvey for tabling it. Uh, and like the principle of QMU, I agree with many of the sentiments uh, in that document. And the Scottish Government will always be constructive for new ideas in terms of the culture of our universities or whatever. But of course, they're autonomous institutions, and therefore this is really a matter primarily for the, the staff, the students, and the management at QMU. And in terms of the current dispute that has been taking place in response to how to handle the deficit at GMU. I, I know the member will welcome the fact that the uh, university has made an announcement to staff that no compulsory redundancies will be required as a result of the transformation project because one of the biggest fears was there would be compulsory redundancies and that does not now appear to be the case which is good news. Question 7, Angus Macdonald. To ask the Scottish Government what progress the Transition Training Fund has made in addressing the reported skills shortage in the HGV industry and increasing the number of drivers. Minister Jamie Hepburn. The latest figures show that over 4,000 people have had applications approved through the Transition Training Fund, surpassing the initial aim of supporting 1,000 participants each year over the course of its three-year period of operation. The fund has supported over 500 individuals undertake training related to the road haulage sector. Angus MacDonald. I thank the Minister for his reply and I welcome the progress the Transition Training Fund has helped bring to the haulage industry. However, he'll be aware that there's still an estimated shortage of 11,000 HGV drivers in Scotland, which clearly has to be addressed, with the added problem of approximately 15% of truck drivers coming from other EU countries, there will clearly be added pressure post-Brexit. Will the Minister undertake to encourage Skills Development Scotland to look at other incentives to attract young people into the logistics industry, and just as importantly, look at ways to ensure that they're retained for the longer term? Minister. 
Uh, yeah, well, uh, clearly I, I agree with the, 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 the point that's made that this cannot be the entirety of our uh, efforts. Uh, Skills Development Scotland is already active in uh, ensuring that there is wider activity. It's uh, working with uh, industry to that uh, end through the, the development of a road haulage skills group to, to focus on skills needs within uh, the transport uh, network and the issue of bringing others into the industry. Young people are uh, modern, through a modern apprenticeship uh, programme as of uh, quarter two of uh, this year, there were 1,243 modern apprentices in training through uh, the uh, freight logistics uh, related uh, frameworks and uh, on a wider uh, point, Skills Development Scotland uh, supports uh, bespoke large goods vehicles driver training requests made by individuals uh, uh, up to, with up to £4,000 to, to cover the, the cost of training. I recognise it's an important issue for Mr Macdonald in particular in terms of uh, Grangemouth and his uh, constituents. So if he wants to uh, speak to me further about this matter, then I'd be very happy to do so. Question 8, Bob Doran. To ask the Scottish Government what discussions it has had with the UK Government regarding partnership working to help communities access employment support. Minister Jamie Hepburn. Uh, the Scottish Government has ongoing discussions with the UK Government on employment support in Scotland. This includes regular ministerial discussions in the Joint Ministerial Working Group on Welfare and a joint operating framework for employability at official level to ensure the smooth interaction and referral between reserved and devolved services and responsibilities in employability support. Bob Doris. I thank the Minister for that answer. This Parliament's Social Security Committee, which I convened yesterday, called for a review of local access to job centres. We believe closures have had a detrimental impact on employment support and have significant concerns over staffing workload levels, making them particularly ill-prepared for the migration of tax credits into universal credit systems. Does the Minister agree with me that any review should consider working with the Scottish Government and others to develop a new community-based, well-resourced and person-centred employment support service, not operating under the threat of sanction, but rather on the basis of support, dignity and respect. Minister. Uh, well, Mr Doris will uh, know that I uh, share his concerns and clearly the committee's uh, concerns about the process of, of job closures, uh, job centre uh, plus uh, closures that we've seen in the last few years. Indeed, uh, President Officer, this Parliament shared those concerns with the exception of the uh, Conservative uh, Party. We uh, voted uh, across uh, Parliament to express our concern about those uh, closures. Our devolved employability uh, programme, Fair Start Scotland, uh, is already leading the way in offering people the opportunity to, of support to, to find uh, work free from the uh, threat of sanctions. I uh, will always continue to urge the UK Government to follow uh, that lead and of course we will continue to explore uh, these matters through the uh, frameworks that I have uh, laid out. That's something we, I can assure Mr Doris and other members will continue to do. Question 9, Willie Coffey. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what impact its commitment to invest £500 million to expand early learning and childcare provision will have on demand for skilled staff and infrastructure investment opportunities in the Kilmarnock and Irvin Valley constituency. Minister Maliton. The Scottish Government and local authorities have committed to an unprecedented level of investment in early learning and childcare through the near doubling of the funded entitlement to 1140 hours per year from August 2020. That the multi-year funding package will see East Ayrshire receive 21.6 million capital funding over 2017-18 to 2021 with revenue funding to support the expansion increasing to 13.6 million by 21-22. This is supporting investment in 15 sites in Kermarnock and Irvine Valley area, whilst 1140 hours is already being delivered, currently being delivered in six settings in the area as part of the phasing. More settings will offer the expanded hours later this year, and it's estimated that 162 full-time equivalent posts will be created in Kilmarnock and Irvine Valley through the expansion. Willie Coffey. Can I welcome that answer from the Minister? And can I also ask if she would intend to expand the number of modern apprenticeships in early learning and childcare and foundation apprenticeships to encourage new recruits to the sector and perhaps also to offer young people work experience while still at school. Minister. 
Thank you. I'm very grateful to the member for asking this. Um, the modern apprenticeship is both a popular and a very fruitful in terms of training, recruitment and retention um, in this sector. And, and that's why Skills Development Scotland have committed through their skills investment plan for the early learning and childcare expansion to increasing ELC uh, modern apprenticeships by 10% each year to 2020. Figures relating to the academic year 2017-18 indicated that this target was exceeded with an increase of 21% in uptake in these modern apprenticeships compared with 2016-17. And we fully expect this growth to continue as we move towards 2020. For the foundation apprenticeships, the framework in social services, children and young people saw an increase in the number of starts from 57 in cohort one, which was 2016-18, to 466 starts in cohort two, which was 2017-19. to The information for cohort three due out early this year is expected to once again show an increase. And I have to say I had the pleasure just this morning of visiting um, Kids Store Childcare in North Lanarkshire, which is a partner provider which was benefiting from nearly half of the staff, over half of the staff having joined as apprenticeships and five foundation apprentices attending from school and they were absolutely full of the benefits of the, that way of entering the profession. Mary Fee, briefly. Thousands of qualified and highly trained staff are required to meet the ambition of the government's childcare expansion. Can the Minister tell me what progress has been made to recruit the required staff and how many people are currently working in the sector? Minister. Absolutely. Um, at the moment, we have about 35,000 people working in the sector, just over 25,000 um, delivering the funded entitlement. The data for the... We had a meeting this morning of the um, delivery board, the joint delivery board, which is where government and local authority representatives monitor the progress. And the data and the intelligence both show that we are broadly on target for meeting forecasts. Another comforting um, thing in recent months was that um, the SSSC uh, report published just before... Christmas showed that daycare of children's services, a category which includes the ELC provision, were reporting a level of vacancy significantly below the national average. And the proportion of services which were reporting that the vacancies they ha did have were hard to fill was also significantly below the national average. Very comforting at this stage of the expansion. Question 10, Stuart Stevens. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to the Higher Education Statistics Agency recording a record number of students from deprived areas enrolling at University in Scotland. Minister Richard Lockhead. I warmly welcome the latest statistics which show a record increase in entrance from our most deprived areas. This demonstrates significant progress on access and the continued strength of the university sector. The figures provide the first official update on progress against the government's widening access targets since the final Commission on Widening Access's report in 2016. Stuart Stevenson. Um, I'm particularly interested in this as one of the top 10 areas of multiple deprivation uh, in Scotland is in my constituency. And can I welcome, in, therefore, the 8% rise that there is in uh, students from the 20% most deprived communities. What more can we expect to see in the years to come that will build on this very early and encouraging numbers? Minister. Well, as Stuart Stevenson says, the, the progress has been excellent indeed. In 2017-18, 15, 15.6% 15 of Scottish domiciled full-time first degree entrants to Scottish universities were from the 20% most deprived areas. And that represents an increase of 1.8 percentage points compared to the previous year. And that is only 0.4 percentage points short of the government's interim target of 16% by 2021. So I want to pay tribute to all the institutions who've uh, delivered that progress. In terms of the future, clearly we have still our intimate target to achieve and then a long-term target uh, of 20% of students being from 20% most applied towards by 2030. And only this morning, I convened the latest meeting of the Widening Access Delivery Group with the Commissioner for Widening Access, Sir Peter Scott, uh, being there uh, as well. And of course, he said that he very much welcomed the progress in these new statistics. And of course, they vindicated the fact that we have free higher education uh, in Scotland. So there's much more to be done, but we're making good progress and we have to keep our foot in the pedal. Question 11, Angela Constance. Thank you, President Officer, to ask the Scottish Government how it will ensure that pupils with additional support needs in the Almond Valley constituency have their needs and right to an education met. Cabinet Secretary. Presiding Officer, the Education Additional Support for Learning Act 2004 requires education authorities to identify 
provide for and to review the additional support needs of their pupils. West Lothian Council has the responsibility for ensuring the additional support needs of pupils in the Allen Valley constituency are met. The Scottish Government supports education authorities in these duties through the provision of statutory guidance to inform local policy and practice. Angela Conson. Thank you. On behalf of the parents and children I represent whose additional support needs uh, are not being met or not met in full, can the Cabinet Secretary give an update on his considerations of the report not included, not engaged, not involved, uh, in particular to issues of resources uh, and practice, and how we are going to ensure that our laws are put into practice in our classrooms? Cabinet Secretary. <coughs> Um, I welcome the report that's been produced by Children Scotland, the National Autistic Society and Scottish Autism on Not Included, Not Engaged and Not Involved. I've already met all of the organisations involved and I have responded in writing to each of the calls for action that they have uh, put to me in that report. I've committed to hosting a roundtable discussion with the authors of the report and other key stakeholders and that will take place later on this month. And in the light of that conversation, I will look to identify what further steps are required to improve the consistency of support across Scotland, uh, perhaps to improve guidance, the, the building of capacity to assist in the delivery of effective additional support and improving the uh, career pathways that are in place to ensure that we have the right skills in place to support young people and to ensure they can be included in, ed in education within Scotland. Alison Harris, briefly. Thank you. I welcome the Parliament's unanimous backing of the Scottish Conservative motion last week in favour of the review of a presumption to mainstream. mainstream. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary when does he actually think the review will be complete and when would it be published? Cabinet Secretary. I think, I think we have to be really clear about our language here. Uh, what Parliament approved last week was a commitment to review the implementation of the, the principle of the presumption of mainstreaming and Parliament by supporting the amendment that I put forward reaffirmed its support for the principle and the presumption of mainstreaming. So it's really important we're clear about what we are saying about this particular issue. Um, I will engage in dialogue with local authorities about how we uh, look at that implementation which lies very much at the heart of the question that I have been uh, it's been put to me by Angela Constance. I'll do that in the light of the discussion I have with the um, with the stakeholders later on this month and obviously I'll be very happy to update Parliament. I gave a commitment to Parliament, to, to Joanne Lamont, that I would look at to the possibility of further debates on this issue in government time and we'll consider that in the light of the round table that, uh, that I host. Question 12, General Ralph. Uh, thank you. To ask the Scottish Government whether the processing of applications to the PVG scheme for people working in schools will change the result of Disclosure Scotland's new IT system and what progress has been made on this. Minister Marie Ton. Disclosure Scotland's new IT system has been designed based on extensive research with users and applying for a disclosure certificate using the new service will be simpler and faster. The system has been developed on the basis of the existing law, the Protection of Vulnerable Groups Scotland Act 2007 and the Police Act 1997. The new IT system is being delivered iteratively in incremental improvements. It will handle all types of disclosure applications under both the 97 and 2007 Acts and is currently handling basic and standard disclosures under the 97 Act. Jeremy Balfour. Uh, thank you, uh, Minister. The Freedom of Information requests have shown that the new disclosure IT system was delayed at the last minute in August last year. As a result, Disclosure Scotland had to pay a higher price to return to the old BT system, which was called ageing and obsolete by Disclosure Scotland's Chief Executive. Had there been any disruption to the PVG scheme as a result of this, and can the Minister confirm that Disclosure Scotland will definitely exit the BT contract at the, at the next available opportunity? Minister. The programme has been proven to be more complex than was originally understood, both technically and functionally, but over the last 18 months, Disclosure Scotland have overcome many hurdles, such as the core cloud platform with security accreditation and the completion of the basics build. Um, I'm very 
um, uh, the safeguarding has not been compromised at all during the transition. And this investment in the new system is a spend to save, so we expect to regain um, the investment within a very short period, a uh, short payback period of less than three years. Question 13, Gillian Martin. Thank you, President Officer. Task the Scottish Government without providing an update on the rate of articulation from college to university. Minister Richard Lockett. The Scottish Funding Council are working on developing the National Articulation Database in order to provide a more comprehensive resource that will allow the identification of students articulating from college to university. This work is nearing completion and the SFC are actively engaging with the colleges and universities in order to quality assure the data. And it's anticipated that the statistics from the database will be available in the spring. Gillian Martin. Thank the Minister for that answer. The articulation route from HND to second and third years at university has long been a key component in the government's widening access ambitions. It's my experience as a former FE lecturer that many of my HND graduates went on to achieve very good degree results. Can the Minister give the Chamber an indication of how the success of articulation has been measured in terms of degree results and if an analysis has been made of articulation in terms of how it's widened access to people from families that have previously not gained access to university. Minister. Well, I'm confident that uh, Ms Martin's students did so well because she's such an outstanding lecturer. But of course, there are other issues uh, that are very relevant to the question uh, as well. And in terms of HND and HNC students, uh, the latest release of articulation data that covered 2014 to 15, it showed that there were 8,402 HNC, HND students that progressed on to university. And in terms of the widening access debate, um, the report called A Blueprint for Fairness from the Commission of Widening Access uh, from March 2016 said that it's important that all institutions engage strongly with articulation. Most standard routes into university depend upon achieving good results at higher. There is there, therefore a significant cohort of disadvantaged learners who leave school with few, if any, formal qualifications. And for these learners, articulation is a crucial alternative route into universities. It's a very important issue for widening access, as Gillian Martin highlights, and we're doing a lot of work on this through the, the forum that, that is there to promote this issue, uh, and we'll keep Parliament updated. Question 14, Jamie Green. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what percentage of primary school teachers are supply staff. Cabinet Secretary. The question is not held centrally. The recruitment of supply teachers is a matter for local authorities and it is for them to determine what best suits their needs. Uh, primary teacher numbers are at their highest since 1980. Jamie Green. Uh, I take it from that the Cabinet Secretary doesn't know the answer to my original question, therefore. Um, can, I, uh, can I say that it is a fact, however, that... In the last year, Scottish schools have spent over £60 million on supply teachers. In North Ayrshire alone, this has increased 60% year on year. Does the Cabinet Secretary not accept and recognise that it is workforce planning that has to improve if this bill is to reduce? Cabinet Secretary. Um, when I, I, I said in my first words of my answer where the information requested is not held centrally, that is what I meant. I mean, we do not hold that information. So I do not possess it in the government to answer Mr Green's question. So if I had the answer, I would have given him it, but we don't have that information, so that explains it clearly to him if he's managed to understand the answer I've now given him. Now, in relation to, in relation to workforce planning, um, in relation to workforce planning, teacher numbers, in primary teacher numbers, are at the highest since 1980. And in the latest statistics that we published, we showed an increase in teacher numbers of 447 in 2018. So uh, I hope that reassures Mr Green that the government is taking every step, including by having new routes into teaching, to ensure that we can boost recruitment into the teaching profession. Of course, we've got to use supply teachers because supply teachers have to fill vacancies that of a short-term nature that crop up from time to time at local authority level. But it's a matter for local authorities to handle and it's a matter for local authorities to report upon. Question 15 is not lodged. Question 16 is withdrawn. Question 17, Monica Lennon. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government how many school pupils have died by suicides in the last five years and what action it has taken in response to this. Cabinet Secretary. Information from death registration records is collected on the number of children and young people who have committed suicide and is published as part of national statistics. 
It is not, however, possible to accurately confirm the number of school pupils who have committed suicide from this information. Our programme for government and suicide prevention action plan set out the actions we will take with our partners to deliver improved services for children and young people's mental health and wellbeing. This includes the provision of counselling support for pupils and mental health first aid training for school staff. Monica Lennon. Thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. In my region, there have sadly been recent instances of school pupils who have died by suicide. Can the Cabinet Secretary provide an update as to what cross-portfolio work is ongoing with schools to ensure that they are fully aware of and engaged in this government suicide prevention strategy? Cabinet Secretary. As I indicated in my earlier answer, the programme for government um, and the suicide prevention action plan set out the actions that we are taking. They obviously involve a lot of work across the education service, across the health service, uh, across the work and counselling that is undertaken. And uh, that work is coordinated by um, ministers um, a, a, on a collaborative basis. There are, of course, some key work streams that support us, uh, including the work streams that are taken forward by the uh, Children and Young People's Mental Health Task Force, chaired by uh, Dr. Dame Denise Coyer. Um, and obviously, there is a, a significant amount of work that is emerging from that that ministers will reflect on as we take forward our priorities. Um, I assure um, uh, Monica Lennon and I assure parents and families around the country that this issue is taken very seriously within government. We understand, uh, well, uh, we try to understand the scale and the enormity of the, uh, the, the trauma that such uh, terrible instances have on families and we try to provide as much support as we possibly can in all of these circumstances and out of the work that is being undertaken I'm sure will come recommendations of how we can strengthen practice and the government will embark on that seriously. Question 18, Stuart McMillan. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what assistance it gives to childcare providers in Inverclyde. Minister Marie Tom. The Scottish Government and COSLA, as I said, have committed to an unprecedented level of investment in early <coughs> learning and childcare. This will see Inverclyde receive nearly £6 million of capital funding over the period 2017-18 to 2020-21 with revenue expenditure to support the expansion of early learning and childcare increasing to 9 million by 21-22. Providers across all parts of the sector are absolutely vital to this expansion and in December we published a delivery support plan to build on the support already available to providers, including 100% rate relief for day nurseries and increased numbers of ELC modern apprenticeships. Our delivery support plan will support the financial sustainability of providers, strengthen partnership working, support workforce recruitment and training and improve communications with parents and carers. Stuart McMillan. Uh, I thank the Minister for that reply and I'd be grateful if the Minister can uh, provide some guarantee that social enterprise childcare providers working with children in, in the zero to three years categories can actually still deliver services on at least a cost neutral basis. Minister. The Scottish Government's approach to delivering the funded early learning and childcare entitlement to all three and four year olds and eligible two year olds is provider neutral. Um, much of the provision for the not to three year olds falls into the proportion of a funded provider's business, which is out with the funded entitlement. So, the funding agreement between the Scottish um, Government and COSLA um, provides the funding to allow local authorities to set sustainable rates for those funded places and those rates will reflect the cost of delivery for all providers delivering the funded entitlement including social enterprises which will be a very important part of the success of this venture. Thank you. I'm sorry that concludes portfolio questions. I apologise to Claire Adamson and Alexander Stewart for failing to reach them on this occasion and I'll shortly move on to the next item of business.